Oh, hello there. Just caught me pinning another one of my labels to my pin board there. Speaking of which, got a video about that coming out very soon. But today, got some very serious stuff to talk about. And this is a video and a subject that I didn't originally intend to do, but it's something that I've been kindly nominated to do by a couple of my subscribers, Duncan and someone who I, I think their name is pronounced Dimitri. Apologies if I've got that wrong. But this is going to be a video about the Whiskey of the Year 2021. Now, the reason why I wasn't going to do this video is because to choose a whiskey which is the Whiskey of the Year, I think that personally the whiskey that I try each year is a very small subset of the whiskey that's released and I kind of feel like I might be doing a disservice to a lot of the great distilleries out there who have made new releases that I just haven't got around to trying. So this video is going to be my personal whiskey of the year but really when you think about it that's probably the case for everyone that does a whiskey of the year or any sort of of the year selection because really who has the time to try every new release and check and recheck every release that's come before and preference also has a huge part to play in this because the whiskey that I choose is going to be something that I enjoy and that goes for anyone else as well but that subjectivity of taste that's kind of half the fun isn't it that way that everyone experiences whiskey slightly differently is just another one of the many facets that make whiskey such a great thing. So for my whiskey of the year pick, I'm going to have some criteria that I've imposed myself. And the first ones that I'm not going to pick anything that's just completely unavailable or extremely hard to get. Now I realise that some people living in some regions find a lot of things hard to find, but I'm going to pick something that is widely available to me here in the UK and hopefully to the majority of you guys at home, because there's just no point in praising and highlighting whiskey that no one's ever going to be able to try. Second criteria is I want to narrow it down to whiskies which are at least remotely affordable, because again, I want this to be something that everyone has access to and everyone can enjoy. And I think that choosing something that the majority of people can't afford, even if it is the best whiskey of the year, is just a bit of a snobbish move and it's just kind of rubbing it in. Third criteria, I want to select something that is thought provoking. So like I said, this isn't necessarily going to be the absolute best whiskey that I've tried this year, but I want it to be something different. And this is really the main criteria for me. I've chosen something that's different to the rest, something that challenges preconceptions, something that teaches you something. And this whiskey that I've chosen definitely is something that's opened my eyes. And I want something that's made by people that are pushing the boundaries and really breaking the mould and challenging the rules of whiskey making. Because as good as tradition is when it comes to making whiskey, we can't just continue making the same old, same old. Even the Scotch Whiskey Association, the SWA, they even admit that things do need to change. A couple of years ago, they added some cask types to the list of casks that whiskey is allowed to be matured in. So even the SWA admits that innovation and trying something new does have a place in the whiskey industry. So saying that, you've all been warned. My number one pick is probably going to be slightly controversial. I wouldn't have it any other way. A lot of people are going to see it and they're going to have a little WTF moment. But hopefully a lot of people are going to see it and try it and be incredibly surprised. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm not going to split it down into categories. This isn't the Oswas, but I'm going to have three places in my whiskey of the year. So bronze, silver, gold. And the first one, the second runner up is King's Barnes. So King's Barnes is a very new distillery situated in Fife and their kind of standard and kind of inaugural dram was the Dream to Dram and I think this is an absolutely cracking whiskey. They've done so well considering that they only began production in 2015 so that the whiskey going into this expression is no more than six years old and you would think that they have to be holding on to some of their older stocks so it's probably potentially significantly younger than that. I think that the King's Bonds Distillery and the King's Bonds Dream to Dram is really a showcase in not just distilling, but in barley, cask selection, and how to set up and run a new craft proper distillery. My second choice, my first runner-up, the silver medal, is going to go to Tora Vague Alt Glen. Now, this is another distillery, this time situated out on the Isle of Skye, and it's also a very heavily peated single malt. 
It's a lovely kind of old school island style single malt where the focus is really on craft. And again, something that I really like, they seem to have a strong focus on the barley, the malt and actually getting the malt to shine through. I think that, again, they've taken huge steps in their brief history in the whiskey world, and it's good to see amazing, heavily peated whiskey coming from somewhere other than the old familiar big names out on Isla. So that's the runners up out of the way. This is it. The moment of truth. Drum roll. This is it. The moment where I reveal my number one pick. This is the whiskey that I chose. So I didn't take this lightly. I spent a really long time searching online, searching through all of my tasting notes, comparing things, digging stuff out of the archives, racking my brain and punishing my liver to select the whiskey of the year 2021. And after all of that deliberating, this is the whiskey that I chose personally above all others this year to hide the whiskey that I actually chose for whiskey of the year 2021. So this here is Loch Lomond Single Grain Scotch Whiskey, and it's the heavily peated edition with the green label. So this is a whiskey that I haven't reviewed yet, but trust me, whiskey fans, the review for this one and a few other Loch Lomond products is coming very soon. I actually tried this whiskey for the first time not that long ago on the recommendation of one of my subscribers. That subscriber is Sid Finch, who is one of my longer suffering subscribers. And this whiskey, when I first tried it, it really surprised me. I thought Loch Lomond, it's a distillery that I kind of trust, to be honest. I think until a few years ago, no one really raved about it. In recent years, it's got a little bit more of a reputation, but it's still not seen as kind of a, a premier crew kind of distillery. But me personally, I've always liked Loch Lomond. I think that they make really good grain whiskey. They make some dependable budget stuff. And I actually think that they're an incredibly underrated distillery, especially seeing as lately, I think they've really upped their game quite a bit. So what is this whiskey here? I'm not gonna go into too much detail because I do wanna do a proper review of this, but this Loch Lomond heavily peated single grain whiskey. Now, grain whiskey is usually, almost always, made with some grains other than malted barley, hence the name grain whiskey, and distilled in a more efficient, but lighter and more neutral spirit producing continuous still or coffee still. And what Loch Lomond have rather innovatively done here is they've taken some very heavily peated 100% malted barley. So they haven't cheaped out on the raw materials. They've gone for the same malted barley that they would use in a single malt, but they've run it through those continuous stills, producing a higher ABV new make with a very light refined and fruity character. Probably, to be fair, also saves quite a bit on cost. But more surprisingly, this single grain whiskey, considering that it's run through continuous stills, it really hangs on to a hell of a lot of that peatiness. When I first tried this, I kind of expected it to be, have a little bit of smoke to it, but be quite bland, maybe a little bit rough, not that interesting. But I think this really stands shoulder to shoulder with a lot of the single malts that are coming out today. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, grain whiskey is its own thing. It does. It deserves to be its own category. It is different to single malt, and it doesn't have to be inferior to single malt. And I think that it's a really clever thing what Loch Lomond is doing here, and also a little bit of a humble thing that they've decided to forego the single malt classification in order to give them a little bit more freedom in production. I think that this whiskey and the way it's produced is a style of whiskey that's probably never existed, at least not in a widely available format, ever before. And I think the combination of that very refined spirit, I mean, I assume that this is probably not a very old whiskey, but there's not a touch of immaturity to it. And the combination of that really refined, sugary, sweet and smooth and slightly sharp spirit combined with those heavily peated notes, I think that it's really something rather new and exciting. And I can't end this video without talking about the price on this one. Like I said, I wanted something that was widely available and also affordable. And this one here, it was on offer, but I bought three bottles of this one. That's how you know it's good when a, a whiskey reviewer buys one bottle and then buys more. Bought three bottles of this for £22.50 a bottle, which, what else do you get for £22.50 a bottle? You're really kind of in the, almost the budget blends category at the low 20s of pounds. But I'm really glad that I tried this one, so I think it really punches above its weight. So 
my message for all of you guys out there, my advice, and it's not just advice for you, it's advice for myself as well, because we're all guilty of it. My advice is don't be narrow-minded or prejudiced with your drinks choices or anything else. Be open-minded, be adventurous, be willing to take some risks, learn new things, and hope for the best. Thanks for watching, and cheers.